I have no idea if there are any lords in the room because one doesn't know what a lord looks like anymore. Do you let anybody into the house of lords now? Maybe even me and Max. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much for your patience uh, in queuing uh, for this meeting. My apologies for that. Uh, the House authorities are evidently anxious about the number of uh, people who have turned up tonight. And I can only apologize in absentia to the very large number of people who have not been uh, able to get entrance and who are currently queuing up very unhappy. The security line. We had no idea there were this many people interested in economics, and it's very, very heartening that so many of you are. And it, uh, I think, argues that me and Max should do this again, uh, perhaps for those who just didn't get in uh, this time. If we do um, have a second run, as it were, don't come again. See if we can <laughs> others. Okay. Um, now, I'm normally, if I say so myself, the main speaker at uh, public meetings, uh, but now, this evening, I'm not even the warm-up act, because the main speaker needs no warm-up act at all. He is the most watched television presenter in the world, and that's quite a big thing to say. But as he's working for Chinese TV, Russian TV, Press TV, and God knows how many other TVs, it's little wonder. And the reason that he is, is because he's in such demand, uh, not only because he's extremely good as a TV presenter, uh, but because he knows more about economics than the people who are running the economy. And I mean the ministers in the treasury, as well as I mean the bankers. The, bankers, I said, uh, in the city of London, who have taken us uh, to the precipice, to the brink of the abyss, maybe into the abyss, uh, unavoidably, ineluctably. We'll hear that from Max in a minute or uh, two. Um, we've uh, not come very far uh, from uh, the days when Sir Alec Douglas Hume the 19th Earl of Hume, who was Prime Minister uh, in 19, up until 1963, who boasted that all he knew uh, about economics was what he could count with a box of matches. Uh, his arithmetic stretched no further than a box of matches. And being an aristocrat, he was not embarrassed to declare so. And uh, now we have a set of financially, economically illiterate uh, ministers in charge of the uh, country's finances and in charge of the country's uh, interface with others around the world as we face, if we are facing, this economic crisis, which Max certainly will argue uh, is going to get very much worse. And it was not uh, any different when the last lot were in power. I knew Alistair Darling for a very long time. I first met him when he was a bearded Trotskyite, handing out Trotskyist literature to the used railwaymen at Waverley, Waverley Station in Edinburgh, uh, who wondered who and what he was. Uh, but he was then uh, a, a political activist for a far-left group who knew nothing about economics. That obviously in the new Labour era qualified him to be Chancellor of the Exchequer. I knew that he knew nothing about economics when the banks collapsed and he gave every, uh, every uh, indication of being uh, a fish out of water, a man out of his death. And uh, the only thing he got right was predicting that we were about to enter the worst recession for 60 years, and that maestro, uh, Gordon Brown, slapped him down for that. Um, so the last lot, who were in charge of our national finances, took us more or less to the edge of the cliff, and of course everybody knows where we are now. We're in deep, deep trouble.
trouble. But Max Kaiser believes that the trouble is going to get much, much worse and that it will not be confined to these islands, not be confined to this continent, uh, but will be a, at least bicontinental phenomenon and that uh, Britain unfortunately placed in the middle of both, uh, between both these continents, uh, metaphorically speaking, politically and economically speaking, uh, will uh, suffer more than most. Uh, when Max, who's a colleague of mine at Preston D, when I realized that he moved to London, I hope you'll forgive me swearing at this point, let me give you a swearing uh, warning. Um, when I learned that Max had moved to London, I asked him to come into Parliament, partly to ask him why he had moved to London. And he put it this way, if I show up in your town, you're fucked. <laughs> and, uh, that was true of Iceland where he moved, it's been true of several places uh, where he's moved. We must hope that he's wrong on this occasion, but you can be the judge of that. Please welcome the legend that is Max Uh, 
uh, it's clear that in Frankfurt, there's a, a possibility now of them achieving some banking supremacy uh, in, in Europe. And uh, uh, Cameron says he, he won't join uh, this banking union. He wants to protect the city of London and keep its position as the top bank center in the world. Uh, uh, oops, uh, uh, let's see, they just got downgraded. Uh, London, the city of London is now number two. Uh, number one is uh, New York City. Uh, Hong Kong is, is hot on their heels. And I think Frankfurt, of course, wants a, a big piece of that, of that business. Uh, David Cameron, in his recent speech at the Lord Mayor's Banquet, he's defending the city. He's promoting the city. Now, what David Cameron can't seem to, to see is how the rest of the world sees the city of London. Um, what David Cameron fails to see is that the city of London is the laxest regulatory environment in the world. Um, the AIG scandal at the heart of the 2008 collapse, the Lehman Brothers collapse, the Bernie Madoff scandal, all had huge components, primary components, right here in the city of London. This is what David Cameron wants to protect. The LIBOR scandal, $300 trillion scandal. News coming about this on a daily basis. How traders in London gaming the system for ill-gotten gains, disrupting the system, causing huge financial dislocation. This is all through London. HSBC implicated in huge multi-hundred billion pound money laundering scandals involving Mexican drug cartels. This is what David Cameron wants to defend. Barclays Bank involved in hundreds of billions of dollars worth of money laundering, market manipulation, drug cartel money, uh, the energy market rigging, the uh, price protection insurance missed selling. The list goes on and on. Bill Black, former top regulator in the United States, the guy who busted the SNLs in the late 70s and 80s, referred to London, the city of London, and the regulatory environment as a cesspit. Paul Moore, top regulator, former top regulator of H. Boss uh, in London. I had him on my show. He agreed that, uh, well, he made the point that over 100 million have been thrust back into poverty because of this financial scandal that has its nexus in the city of London. And we decided, and Paul agreed, this is nothing less than a financial holocaust. Millions are dying. Millions are set to die. People are committing suicide. Uh, all for the sake of some banker bonuses to protect what David Cameron considers to be the jewel of the UK economy. Fraud, larceny, manipulation, market rigging, scandals. And not to mention his re-election coffers that put him in office. Uh, this goes all the way up to the Bank of England caught in the LIBOR rigging scandal is now caught in a collusion with the Treasury and trying to hide 